Welcome back to the Jumper App News Desk. It is launching FEA Jumping Nations Cup week here at Thunderbird Show Park in beautiful Langley, BC. Katie stays at here. And today I am joined by two veterans of the World Championships, Gail Greeno and Brian Mogray. And we're going to go through and preview this week's Nations Cup competition by the numbers. And those numbers provided by Jumper App, which you can download on the App Store. Now, Gail and Brian, we're going to start out today. I'm going to give you a few names competing on Sunday in the Nations Cup for their respective countries, and you're going to tell me whether you think they're going to be clear or not clear. So let's start with a really hot rider. She is fresh off her first five-star Grand Prix victory. That was with a horse called Northern Light. She'll be riding a horse called Hamilton on Sunday. That is Tiffany Foster for Hamilton. Gail, clear or not clear for Tiffany? 100% clear. She is hot off a big win. Uh, she's on home turf in this beautiful facility at Thunderbird in Langley. Uh, all the home crowd will be behind her, and she really rises to that occasion. Brian? I'm going to go with Claire for Tiffany. Hamilton is such an amazing horse, and Tiffany knows how to ride a Nations Cup like... She knows how to get ready in the morning. So I think that you can always rely on her, especially at this point in her career. She had a great win last week, and uh, she knows that horse extremely well, and I think that it won't even be a question that she's clear. What a special home field advantage for Tiffany and Hamilton, who seems just like the quintessential Nations Cup horse. He's averaging just 2.17 faults at meter 60 this year, according to Jumper App. So let's go to the USA. And Brian, we might have a little bit of bias here with you, but that's perfectly okay. Feel free to show it. What do you think of Carl Cook and Kalinka? I'm gonna go with no answer because I don't want to <laughs> jinx anything, I but know. I'm wishful thinking for everyone and I want the best, but I am not gonna say. All right, Gail, give me the real opinion then. Clear or not clear for Carl? I say for sure no time faults. <laughs> I would say that's a good bet. And I would stick with that bet. Well, that is one exceptionally quick combination, but they actually had two time faults last week here in the Grand Prix. You can bet that is not going to happen again. That's a bit of an anomaly to say the least for that pair. Carl and Kalinka are jumping clear rounds at a 64% clip at meter 60 this year. They're on absolute fire. I would say they're definitely going to be quick and they might just be clear too. So let's move on now to Ireland and a combination of Shane Sweetnam and James Can Cruz. Gail. Uh, one of my most favorite horses in the, comp in the competition. And uh, I, will, I will say clear. Brian. I'm going to agree it's one of my favorite horses as well. Um, I would say clear. The numbers are staggering for this horse. 80% is the clear round <laughs> rate for this combination at meter 60 in 2023. That wow. is quite the wow. combination and a great field assembled for the Nations Cup here at Thunderbird this week. All right, let's go to Australia. And this is a combination that's maybe a little bit newer to this height. David Cameron, Oaks come by chance. Gail? Well, I don't know David so well. Um, haven't really seen much of him. So... Uh, I'll be interested to watch him go and uh, I'll be paying attention and then maybe I'll have more information. Yeah, not a lot of experience at meter 60, especially this year. Not everyone can go clear in the Nations Cup, especially if the course designer has anything to say about it. <laughs> uh, but they could still have a very good round here on Sunday and we'll look forward to watching them for Australia. All right, so let's talk about some dark horses while we're on that note. Maybe some that wouldn't necessarily be, no question, that's clear, but could come through with a really big effort on Sunday. Who would you say would be your dark horse, Gail? Well, I would go with one of the two girls on the United States team because of the new pressure that they're under. I have a soft spot in my heart for the girls that it's the first time in the Five Star Nations Cup, and uh, I will be wishing them the best and... Uh, as dark horses, I take that as a positive that they'll come out fighting with double clears. I'm going to agree with Gail. Anytime you ride for your country and competing on a team, especially a senior team, it's a new pressure that you've never felt before as a rider. Uh, these two girls, there's no shortness of horsepower here, as well as a fantastic teams behind both of them. Uh, in my personal experience, uh, I find that there's an added pressure, but it really also inspires you and brings the best out of you. And I think for these two girls, especially to have each other being 
mm. in similar boats Great point. to lean on each other is really going to be important for them this weekend. I'd say I agree. Dark horses for those two, but I think they're going to use it to their advantage. And after this week, they will never be considered a dark horse again, and they're just going to be Absolutely. members of Team USA. Yeah, let's talk just a little bit about Charlotte Jacobs, Edwin Kula, Milshan for the U.S. They're jumping clear at a 46% clip this year and averaging just 2.75 faults, according to Jumper App, and that's across all heights this year. I think they're really ready for this occasion. And how about one other dark horse? Can we talk a little bit about Team Mexico? Antonio Shadrari Sr. and H. Lucky Reto. I think you would really have considered them a dark horse until the Nations Cup in the United States a couple of weeks ago. Last year, they didn't jump a clear round at meter 60, but this year, they're averaging just 1.6 faults at the height, and they're clear 60% of the time. They've been in the top 10 in every start they've made at the height. What did you think of their performance in San Juan Capistrano? I thought it was amazing. You know, horses, um, and obviously the sport that we do in our industry, it goes in such waves. You have moments where you're really riding a high and sometimes where you really just can't figure it out for no rhyme or reason. I think they'll do great this week. I think they're really on a hot roll and they should, in theory, remain on that hot roll. Last hot topic here, we're gonna talk podium picks. Who is gonna finish first, second, and third in this Nations Cup competition? The United States took the win in San Juan Capistrano. So who's gonna take the win here at T-Bird on Sunday, Gail? Well, I'm going with Canada. I mean, obviously biased, but we have our A-team here in Mario, Tiffany, Amy, and Aaron. I am expecting six clear rounds. All right, one, two, three. So who's gonna finish behind Canada? I'm going to go, sorry, Brian, I'm going to go with Ireland just because it's Ireland. And then I'm going to go with the United States of America. Brian? The top of my podium I will not disclose because I will not jinx anything. <laughs> my second place would have to be Ireland and I'm going to put Canada. All right. So to clarify Brian's podium so he does not jinx them, he <laughs> thinks the United States will finish on top. And for my podium, I'm going to go Ireland on top. They have a great record here at Thunderbird Show Park in this event. And boy, their team is stacked. And then I will take the home team. I think they're going to be coming out with their best. And the U.S. has had an amazing season. They might just let someone else have a turn and they'll finish third on the podium this Sunday. Well, if you want to dive deeper into the numbers, you can download Jumper app on the App Store.